this session is about selling farming as a career. All the businesses around here, they're looking for graduates, they're looking for someone to work in their agribusiness. I mean, here we're talking about farming as a career and, and how good it can be, or otherwise, as our speakers are going to say. Um, so we have three excellent speakers, all, all farmers in their own right, all that took different routes to where they are now in their career. Um, and we're just gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna tease out a little bit about how they started off, where they are now, and, and I suppose the title of this section is, is Next Level Farmers. So I suppose, what skills do young farmers need to become successful? Um, so we'll touch off that towards the end, but I'm gonna start off on my, on my immediate here on my left is Julian Hughes, a tillage farmer from County Kilkenny. Julian, t tell us a little bit about, I suppose, your, your background, how you started off in, in farming, I suppose, first of all, and then the type of farming that you do, et cetera, and that kind of thing. Yeah, <coughs> I suppose we're, we're slightly different in the way we farm. We'd have a, a horticultural-based business. We've got carrots, we've got parsnips and cereals. And also we had a, well, we have, we have a flower business there. You know, I, I wouldn't have been the best student by any means. Yeah. I see some of the lecturers that were with me when I was in WIT. <laughs> I would have been fairly, um, well, look, I was a shocking student, to be honest with you. <laughs> Took me a while to warm to it. I wasn't, I wasn't exactly farmer of the year as we went through it. Yeah. Probably when I got through fourth year, I started to get a bit more serious about it. And I traveled to the UK and did a master's in crop protection. And then from there, it kind of sprung on because yeah. I kind of opportunities started to come out of that. You know, yeah. I went to the Oxford Farming Conference and I met Matt there and started doing a small bit with the journal and things went on from there. So. You know, yeah. our, our business, we, we would have a different type of structure to our business. Now, myself and my wife are the, the only shareholders in our business, and we have an operations-based business. Yeah. We, we produce parsnips that we're packing into little. We produce yeah. carrots that we're packing into, well, we're not packing into O'Shea's, we're supplying to O'Shea farms. Yeah. And the, the business is essentially an operations business. So we don't actually own any land, which I think is, you know, I wouldn't say novel, but it's probably interesting for some guys because oh. everybody thinks you have to own land yeah. to be a farmer. Correct. We own no land. creates a problem in terms of financing and things yeah. like that and that you can't collateralise off it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, we, we, we're moving on, going from strength to strength. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that, Julian. Am I going for a break now, then? Um, James Fiery, beef farmer from C County Mead. In, in terms of your background and how you started in beef farming or farming in general, just give us a, give us a taster on where you, where you are. Okay, so I'm a third generation farmer on our land in Dunboyne in County yeah. Mead. Uh, my grandfather started the farm and yeah. then he had nine kids uh, and only one farmer out of them. That's yeah. my dad, Dennis. So I'm following in his footsteps on his shoulders. Um, we've been developing our business as um, a progressive commercial farm since the early 70s and there's been a lot of up and down since then. Um, I suppose we're in a downward cycle at the moment, pressure, there's an awful lot of pressure on us at the moment, but at the same time we have a hist history there that enables us to try and see a, a, a future in, a, in the next cycle. So let, let me just jump in, I mean, you said you're your third generation, was it always your ambition to be on that farm and to be always beef farming? So uh, I'm from a family, I'm the eldest, uh, second eldest uh, of a family of four. I was the only one who showed any interest in the farm at all. Yeah. I have a sister who's uh, a doctor of biology and a uh, sister who's a uh, lawyer and a brother who's a salesperson. Yeah. And uh, I was just the only one that it stuck with. I've yeah. always done it. I got up every morning uh, when I was a kid. I used to get a pound, one pound coin in my hand uh, to clean the troughs in the morning of a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah. If I didn't get up and do it on the Saturday morning, my mum would be given out to me saying, you should be out there helping your dad. I'd say, well, why wouldn't you say that to my little brother? Yeah. She says, You're, you should be doing it. And yeah. I've always done it. I've loved it. It's, it's how I define myself now is I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer first, more than anything. It's what I talk about most often in my day. Uh, it's what I think about all day long. Yeah. Uh, that's the detriment of my family if, and everything else. If I said to you that you had to change in the morning to some other type of farming. Oh, my daughter know, is asking me that all the time. Daddy, if you weren't a farmer, what would you be? I don't know. I no, studied, no, no, I studied I want architecture. To keep you a I want to keep you a farmer, yeah, okay. but some other, some other sector of it. Like a, a different sector? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh no. My God. <laughs> don't go there. Uh, <laughs> So we have two, two aspects of our farming. I'm not just beef, we're also tillage. Uh, yeah. We have 700 acres of own farm land that's all in uh, winter wheat production. Yeah. And so between those two enterprises, I didn't tell you, we're finishing about uh, 1,500 bulls yeah. off the farm every year, yeah. all indoors, all intensively finished, uh, yeah. purchased from uh, small, small producers of, of suckler herds, top quality cattle produced in Ireland, and they come up to us to be finished for, for yeah. six months. Yeah. Okay, James, we'll be back. Kevin Toomey on my far left, a dairy farmer from County Cork. Kevin, who's farming with you? Where are you farming? What type of farming? Okay, uh, I suppose just a bit of background first. I suppose I'm, I'm youngest of six. Uh, there was three boys in my family. 
So I wasn't to be the, a, a farmer. There, there was two farms, one, one a beef farm and one a dairy farm, and each brother was getting one of them, and I was told to be on your way. <laughs> so I, I, I suppose, changed uh, my parents' mind by convincing them that I wanted to go farming. So I went uh, to egg college, and I went to, did a farm apprenticeship board, uh, three-year farm management on farm placement. And that probably really sparked, uh, um, I suppose, me into thinking, yes, I, ca I can do this. I can make a living out of this. I want to do this for myself and become fully self-employed. So, Because I, I did a year working with a guy on a farm in Tipperary where he leased all the farm and owned all the cows and was making a very, very good living. So for yeah. me, it showed me I didn't have yeah. to own the farm Absolutely. to become a farmer. Yeah. Um, so at, at the moment, I suppose we, we're... we're we, we've grown our own business. We, we own our own farm. We, we, we're farming now, and we're involved in three other dairy farms as well that we're working with. I mean, Kevin, it's, it's often a question that's put to me, how many cows do you need to be a dairy farmer or to kind of to build a, an income to be a dairy farmer? As you say, you started off with that farmer in Tipperary. He, he owned no land, yeah. and he was leasing it. He was yeah, and, 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 and for me, it's not, it's, it's not about scale. It's actually about yeah. efficiency. It's all about efficiency. And so originally, I, I, I got in as a new intern with 40 cows, and, and, and the, my five-year plan was to get to 70 cows, and that was, the, was going to deliver a good income yeah. and actually will still deliver a good income Correct. today if you do it really efficiently. Correct. Now, to grow from that though, you need to put in more investment so yeah. you, it's harder to do that. Yeah. But, but so it's not about big scale, big numbers. No. It, it's about being very efficient at what you're doing. Uh, Kevin, how do you get those efficiencies? It's easy to say get efficiencies and I often, you know, obviously write about it. I mean, how, how do you get those efficiencies? What do you mean when you say efficiencies? Like? Well, well, I think firstly you need to understand the business that you're in uh, and, and, and the business we're in is, is, is a spring grass system so we want to turn the, the grass we grow on the farm into milk that makes a profit. Yeah. Uh, so it's to understand how you manage a herd of cows and how to grow grass. Yeah. And that's, that. that's, it's not yeah. simple, but yeah. it is simple. So it's about just understanding that. And you gain that over experience, working for other people, uh, applying the experience, so getting responsibility on farms to, to see how effective you can be in managing the farm yeah. and learning that way. So it yeah. takes a bit of time. It mm. takes hands-on experience, but the important ingredient in, which often is the weakest, is the financial aspect. You, yeah. you need to start being, being good at figures yeah. and understanding how, how, how the money works. Kevin, last question. You, you talked about moving off the farm to gain experience, like, I mean, and, and you talked about the farm in Tipperary. Is, that, is it important to get away from the farm? I, I, I think it's of, of huge benefit uh, to, to, to do work experience away from your home farm. Yeah. You know, a, a minimum two, three, four years and do a bit of traveling and, and, and upskill yourself, see the world, broaden your horizons. Yep. There's lots of things to see and learn f around the world and, and I think they're a very important part of yeah. it. Don't James, come home too soon. No, James, I'll put the same question and Julian, I'll come to you. In terms of your experience away from the farm, how, how did it develop your career? Like? Well, I've had a, a, a very, very different type of educational career to get to me where I am. Yeah. Um, I started off studying architecture after I left school. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't complete that course and then I went and worked um, working for money, earning a living, and then I went and I studied computers, yeah. and I ended up working in a warranty department in a truck company. All the time, um, with the grow, come, come back to the farm, you know, but how was I going to do it, and could I end up actually really yeah. working with my dad at the same time, and yeah. we're two strong personalities working together, but at the same time, I was always upskilling, I was, uh, became a Microsoft certified professional as part of that course, as, and I always had an interest in technology, which I brought back to yeah. what we're doing now on a yeah. daily basis. So we'd be highly uh, technically orientated and the yeah. production side of what we're doing. We want to know exactly what cattle are doing at all time. Yeah. And um, uh, so my, my education career was wide and varied and it's brought me to where I am today and I wouldn't change any of it. I've made lots of wrong decisions in my life uh, mm. and, and a few good ones as well. And coming back to the farm was uh, well, the best one I ever made. I have to say that yeah. now. Yep. James, I, I, I'll throw it at you. You're a large-scale farmer. You're finishing 1,500 cattle. Can someone with 100 cattle or 200 cattle do what you're doing in terms of becoming a, a, a profitable beef, beef farmer? And, and how do they do that? Like, Kevin talked about well, the efficiencies. Like, yeah, well, on our end, um, it, it is about scale because it's yeah. about very, very high output um, and, and low margins. I mean, if, if we... We have to be w willing to live with about 50 euros per head net margin on any, on any animal. Mm. If it's very easy to blow that 50, 
and it's very, very hard to retain the 50. So we have to know exactly where the cattle are on any particular production 50-day cycle. Are they, if they're not putting on the weight that they're required to be putting on, we're going to get rid of them early because we can get in a replacement that's going to do it more efficiently than they are. We know that, uh, let's say, that when they come in at 500 kilos, they're eating 10 kilos of dry matter. Yeah. It's taking about 5.5 kilos to convert that uh, into a kilo of meat, but Good where right. it takes... 8.6 kilos of dry matter to put on that same kilo and a half yeah. when they're uh, at the end of their finishing cycle. Yeah. So it's about when do you pull early enough uh, and knowing that limit. So it's all yeah. about knowing where you are at any one stage. Okay. And the same is the case for your, uh, your accounts. It's telling me highlight, is that okay? You go to start buying, it's telling me highlight. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of risk in what you're doing, but you have to be as aware as you possibly can on yeah. what your costs are. Uh, yeah. Because if you don't know, nobody else is going to tell you. And it's very, yeah. very easy to lose money that way. Yeah. Julian, in terms of the efficiencies on a, on a crop farm, tillage farm, horticultural farm, I mean, it can go wrong very quick in terms of weather, for example, as a, as, as a constraint. Like, I mean, for you to make your business sustainable, you know, again, what skills and what can, far, what can young farmers potentially do to upskill themselves, I suppose, to, to make their business sustainable? Yeah, well, like, in the, especially with carrots, I started out growing carrots when I was back in college. Yeah. Started out with three acres, went up to 25 acres, put in 40 acres of carrots, lost every one of them to frost. So, you know, in terms of developing scale, it was a bit of a hiccup along the way because it, was a, it, was, it knocked me back a yeah. huge amount. You know, one of, the, one of the big aspects for me was, was more so traveling. Um, after I finished my master's, I played for Nuffield. Yeah. And from there, I got involved in different projects. About 13 on and this and 97 and, and still another full one here. What, what, Anyone did who thinks do? what did it do, Josh, Julian, when you say... I mean, we all pretty much travel, the same. What did you experience when you were when you were when you were traveling? Like what? Oh, well, I, I think it just it just lifts the bar a little bit and what you think your own expectations are where yeah. you want to be. You know, you you, you learn very little. I, I was at a show there recently in Germany. Like what I learned at that show would take me forty farm visits in Ireland. Jeez. It's just just a waste of time. You you, you got to get on the boat or get on the plane and get yeah. out of Ireland and go look at other systems yeah. because in other countries the scale is 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 where they're all going. In the UK mm -hmm. for cropping continental Europe, North America. Yeah. You know, anyone who thinks the prices are going to go up in terms of commodities is absolutely bananas. It's yeah. a scale business, it's a volume business, that's the only yeah. way it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, same, same on vegetables. Correct. It's a pure scale and volume business. Yeah. Well, can we compete? Can, it, can a tillage farmer or a, a horticultural farmer here in Ireland compete? You know, you, again, you have big scale, but I mean, not everyone is there or at least starting there, you know? So how, how can they compete like, to, to, to be able to get to a sustainable income from tillage farming as such? Well, in terms, in terms of growing commodities, you know, I, I would have always said it. I, I, don't think, I don't think this country is suited to growing commodities yeah, or yeah. wasting our time because yeah. they can grow commodity feed grains in uh, Ukraine and Absolutely. Romania and all these countries yeah. far cheaper than we ever will. Mm. But in terms of growing high-value seed crops, things like that, mm. we can do it. And you can mm. see that market is starting to open up a bit more. Mm. Um, you know, in terms of our vegetable business, uh, yeah. carrots and parsnips, potatoes, yeah. we have a natural barrier in terms of you've got to export into Ireland, which is a cost per tonne. Yeah. And that... that, that Insulates as a small bit. Okay, yeah. So it's it's it, it's it's niche it's niche niche businesses within the overall businesses. Like so, grain you you know seed that has been certified that you can guarantee that you can stand over. Like get the premium and make it work. Like yeah, look, everything we do is about value add yeah. right across the board. Horticulture, cereals, a whole lot. Yeah. Anything we do, we try and put more value into it than just putting it on as yeah. a commodity. Yeah. You know, in terms of our vegetables and things like that, it's all about packaging, marketing, things yeah. like that. Try and get a higher premium for them. Yeah. In terms of cereals. Differentiating from feed grains yeah. is the most important thing. Yeah, Kevin, milk, one of the great agricultural commodities, again traded globally, and especially here yeah. in Ireland, we're trading globally. Are you in the same t uh, same mind frame as, as Julian in terms of trying to add value to your milk, or is it just listen, get the liters up the lane, get them out? Uh, no, it, it is about adding value, but it's, it's probably in a slightly different context because we're selling through a cooperative. Right. Um, so for us, it's about adding to milk quality, so yeah. much higher protein, much higher constituents. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways. You can breed for it and you can feed for it. So yeah. breeding is the best long-term strategy by a, by a long way is to breed for it. Yeah. But then you have the, the efficiencies then on farm, and it's, it's learning how to farm efficiently yeah. and effectively. So, you, you know, you, you have a nice length of working day. You're not killed from work to make this happen because yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's a rounded approach we have to take to, to, to dairy farming now mm. because look, there is going to be volatility, mm. there is going to be low times and high times and yeah. we have to be able to farm profitably through the low times yeah. and that's the challenge to be able yeah. to do that. I mean, when you say rounded, like, I mean, it's rounded built on the skill levels that you have. Like, I mean, what are your core skills, would you say, as a dairy farmer? You know, what are your core skills that, 
but make your business tick that make it efficient and make it profitable so probably the core skills is, is uh, uh, co, co health management cows yeah. uh, managing cows livestock yeah. and grassland skills yeah. and the third one is the financial one they're the three core skills right. for my business yeah. at, that this within this country of Ireland that anyone if you really understand them and deliver you'll farm yeah. really well yeah you know, yeah. and, and that's shown in, 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 in the figures in Irish farms. There's a big variation in the cost of production in Irish farms. Yeah. But the top quarter are, are really producing and really making reasonably yeah. good profits. Yeah. James, would you, would you agree that in terms of core skills, you, you mentioned one of your skills was animals that weren't performing, pull them out and, you know, m move on to an animal that, that's not performing better. You, as a beef farmer, what core skills should young farmers here, the, uh, you know, and all around, what, what, what core skills should they be focusing in on to make their business efficient? It would be a general one. I'd be saying like something like an ag science degree, if you could get into yeah. it and do it for four years, you yeah. know, it's going to stand to you for the rest of your life. You know, yeah. Everything else will flow from that. It really doesn't matter which your particular primary degree is at the end of the day. Yeah. If you want to get into the food business and food yeah. agri-business, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do it. There's so much opportunity here today. I'm just amazed to see it all. We're, we're, we're stuck in a feed trough um, every day of the week and mm -hmm. going to cattle marts. We don't get to see the enthusiasm that's there mm -hmm. for young mm -hmm. people looking for a, a career and a, mm -hmm. and a life in, in, in farming. In farming. And it is there, it certainly is there. Look at all of the uh, in industry that's here today yeah. looking to get new, yeah. new and fresh people. So um, all yeah. the experience that you get is as much as uh, you'll be yeah. able to use. Yeah. Um, Julian, core skills for, for a tillage, for an arable farmer, for a crop farmer. You know, again, t just touch off with what you think are crucially important two or three core skills that you need to be a good farmer. Yeah, pr probably the most valuable thing that I would do in our business anyway is cash flow forecasting, budgeting, right. you know, a cost analysis. We would do a weekly P&L in our production in terms of our pack yeah. house because yeah. the volumes in terms of turnover are just astronomical yeah. for a very, very tight margin. Right. So, you know, to be very cost aware in terms of how the pack house is running, the efficiencies or inefficiencies, yeah. because, yeah. you know, you can breed inefficiencies into a system very quickly yeah. without even realising it's happening. Yeah. You know, getting just just getting to get into a little bit longer, yeah. you know, not being prepared, all them yeah. sort of things. So I yeah. suppose my, my job is to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Budgeting, Budgeting is a big one. Cash Correct. flow. Cash flow. Cash financial flow. management. Like. So, I mean, another core skill. How, how, does a, how does a young graduate or a young person looking to get in learn that core skill of financial budgeting? You know, I, got, I, I got involved in a business outside of Ireland where we did a fundraise, so it was very financially based, and I have absolutely no financial experience, no accounting experience. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, to me, the only way to learn is just to get stuck into it. Yeah. You know, I was thrown in at the deep end when we were fundraising in terms of return on capital and yeah. internal, internal returns and all sorts of things. You know, the only way to learn is just to get stuck into get stuck it. Into it. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, I'll jump back to you. In terms of the stepping stones, maybe, to become a dairy farmer, I mean, is, quotas are gone now, we all know that, but I mean, is there a stepping stones, or, or what should the stepping stones be to kind of become a successful dairy farmer? You know, for someone um, starting off now, with, with, yeah. with, and with maybe no land, okay. or maybe no cows, yeah. you know, so what's the... Yeah, there, there, there are stepping stones uh, there, certainly, and, 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 and Chagas pr produced a, a booklet on its stepping stones, and it's a very good guide yeah. in terms of uh, where you actually sit on a page, in terms of on that ladder, where are you? Yeah. But you, you, you can go dairy farming at any stage, so you don't just have to be a young person coming out of farm. You can right. do a change of career. We've had them with us come through our, our business right. uh, who've worked with us and gone on and running their own dairy farms at this yeah. stage. Yeah. So it, you, you can start anywhere at any time. Yeah. It's to understand where you are on that skill set page. Mm -hmm. You know, put in a bit of experience in mm -hmm. terms of upskilling your, your core skills. Uh, but it, it just takes a bit of time to, to, to build your momentum and, and get going. Mm -hmm. So for me, you can start anywhere you, along. But like, it's very important whether you go to university or not, you know, if you can focus in on, on the important things of that career path and that business, then yeah. you will make progress. Yeah. James, a lot of suckler and bee farmers will say to me that a, a part of that career as a bee farmer would be to be that they're, they're actually at home, that they can get involved in other things, you know, that they're not kind of committed 100% to the, you know, I mean, look at, let's be real about it. The, the majority that's not me, that's not me. That's not you, no, that's fine, but I want, your, I want your perspective on it. I mean, the average herd size suckler farmers, as you know, you know, between 15, 20 suckler cows, I mean, it, it, it's a career for them, but it's also, they can have a life outside of it in terms of some other part of life that, that you know, that they're not purchasing, that they can do it themselves, like. Yes, um, well, I mean, you see it when you go to a mart anywhere around the country, there's this whole vibrancy of life in the rural Ireland. I mean, yeah. and people want to live in it and be part of it, and I am part of it, and we love being part of it. So um, working and uh, working on the farm, I, I, it's, it's so much part of who, who, who I see myself, and I want to see my, my family doing it as well, you know. So we want to try and keep 
local local farming going and and it, it is not a, it's not that easy because it takes a lot of money a lot of effort a lot yeah. of commitment yeah. and um uh, we, you have to get paid for it at the end of the day yeah. and and uh beef is in a in a, in a hard yeah. time at the minute because yeah. you know um the, the market is saying that they want it smaller and smaller we've been spending the last 40 years trying to get them bigger and bigger and and we're trying to have to compromise now somewhere and yeah. uh, it's not that easy but somewhere there is compromise always you know mm. and mm. um so, th so that's it we're so what I'm hearing for you, James, is that the, the, the idealistic, I suppose, vision of being a dairy farmer, that you can be at home or a beef farmer or a tillage farmer, it's more than that. You need to be able to make it pay. You need to be able to make the euro stack up. You have to be able to, be able to afford to stay there where you want yeah, to be, you know. Exactly. And uh, yeah. uh, some, some years are very good and some years are really desperate, yeah. you know. It's trying to find the happy medium. It's been able to get, keep going over the period. Yeah. Um, Upskilling is so important. Making yeah. sure that you're always watching what the market is doing. Yeah. Uh, precision farming is next in, in what we have to do. Yeah. But that takes an awful lot of money, you know. And yeah. uh, it's all about uh, yeah. expenditure at the end of the day. Yeah. One of my best friends is my bank manager because I have to ring him so regularly and say, this, this is where we are. This yeah. is the reality of what's happening today on the farm, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just so you're aware of it, yeah. you know. So that's your financial management measurement as well. Like That's, that's your piece and, and you have a, a good man on it. Julian, in, in terms of being at home for you, is it... You know, I know I'm not saying you're at home. I mean, you can tell us, but I mean, in, in terms of, you know, does, does, it, does that factor into your career choice to be a dairy farmer, the fact that you're local to home or you're... Just, just Jack, I've, I've been called a lot of things, but a dairy farmer wouldn't be one of money. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's, it's nice being around home. You know, I suppose there's, there's, I've got two brothers. One of them is working with me on the farm and uh, the other one is out of the country. But yeah, it's, look, it's nice to be around at home. Um, that's all nice. Not really. Yeah, that it, doesn't sound like a career no, no, it, changing it, move. It, it like, most no. certainly wasn't a career factor, the fact that yeah. I get to work with my family. More often than not, they're super, but sometimes <laughs> I just can't take it. You know, they, it, it can be very difficult. Yeah, but Good man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jack, that, that, can, can, can I come in there, Jack? Yeah. I suppose just as part of a career, it, it's not all about money either. Correct. You know, money's part of it. It's also a lifestyle choice. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's about being self-motivated, entrepreneurial. It gives you that. You can see it here on some, some of the guys here. Fierce entrepreneurial uh, ambition. It's there. There's opportunities there if you want to go and chase them. Correct. You know, so it's, it's more than just money, Jack. You know, and, 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 and there is a lifestyle. Uh, it, is, it can be a very fa good place to grow a family up. Yeah. Uh, and, and that has to be part of it as well. Correct. You know, and you don't necessarily need to own land anymore to have a farming oh. career. Yeah. Like we've put four staff through with us that have gone off and now running their own farm businesses through yeah. leasing or, or share farming or whatever. So yeah. there are huge opportunities as we see it in the dairy sector at the moment yeah. now. Yeah. James, in terms of the beef sector or the, or the dry stock sector, we'll just call it, you know, include the sheep and whatever. Do you see opportunities in Ireland or do you see a vision for it where it can become, whether it's producing a niche sheep meat from Connemara or producing some other uh, product rather than just a commodity? Do you see that, Julian touched off it, do you see that as being an aspect of the kind of the future or the vision for the, the beef or sheep sector? We, we definitely need a very, very healthy beef promotion unit coming from Ireland because we're exporting over 90% of what we're producing. Yep. Uh, per capita, we're like fourth or fifth in the list in the world per capita of exporters. Mm. We need to be able to find new markets for that product. Mm. We need to be able to promote it in those new products and get the product in on the shelves there. That's yeah. not our job. But we're we're no. producing the cattle to get to those markets. So yeah. without those markets, we're only wasting our time, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. so that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about a growing uh, world population. Uh, yeah. We have a defined amount of land. Yeah. Uh, we're never going to get a whole lot more production, Correct. food production area. So Correct. it's about being as efficient as we can with what yeah. we have. Yeah. Julian, you're a farmer, tractor driver, financial manager. In terms of marketing your product, like who does the marketing for your product? Now you talk, you've, you've different, you've different, but I mean, in, you've different businesses and relationships with different people. Like, but do, does someone in the tillage or horticulture sector need to be a marketeer as well? I suppose we're we're slightly different in that we are cereals and horticulture. On yeah. the horticulture side of it, you know, I, I probably don't get as much time in the saddle anymore as I used to. Mm. Um, I get dragged in for three o'clock in the morning shift or something like that. Yeah. But you know, as a day-to-day -day tractor driving, I probably don't spend as much time. And to be honest with you, I really, with the type of business we have, I need to spend more time in the office. Yeah. And that's when the likes of the marketing. But it's really a networking thing, you know, for in terms of cereals as well, the opportunities for niche crops, premium crops, seed and things like that. You need to get out there and talk to people. And yeah. It's no different on the horticulture side of things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all, it, it comes back to me. Yeah. Final question, I'll run through you all. Kevin, in terms of a vision for the dairy industry and for the, the jobs that are around here, but also farming as a career, are you relatively positive? And maybe just one take-home message 
for those that are listening in terms of what they need to latch on to, to become successful? Okay, so it, it is a very positive story from a dairy industry point of view. The industry now requires at least 3,000 more people working on farms within yeah. the industry, whether they're owner operators or working in the business. So there's a requirement there now. Uh, and there's an opportunity to be part of that growth curve in the future as well. Yep. So there are certain core skills that you that we spoke about learning. So they're, they needed to be learned and, and, and developed. Right. And, there, and there's plenty steps on that career path. So yeah. you, not everyone wants to be a business owner. So there's yeah. plenty places along that path for, for everyone to Correct. suit everyone's niche. Correct. Excellent. Thank you very much. James, in terms of your vision and in terms of just one nugget of information for young grads listening to what they want to become, a beef farmer or some way involved in farming. I'd say get on farm and talk to the farmer. If you're looking to get uh, experience, you can't beat going yeah. up, talking to farmer eye to eye and say, I'm a very interested person. Can you tell me something about what you're doing? And yeah. that's how you start a conversation. Uh, yeah. Advocate for agriculture and yeah. you know, have a good elevator speech ready so you can yeah. tell them about yourself in five minutes because Correct. they're as interested to know about you. If you want Absolutely. to know about them, they'll want to know Absolutely. about you. So yeah. be ready to be able to give it to them and tell yeah. them who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, always opportunities in whatever sector, tillage, horticulture? Yeah, no, I, like, <coughs> I, I, I probably gave up opportunities that were possibly a little more lucrative abroad, but I think there's the opportunity in Ireland to do the same thing, if not better. Yeah. Um, you know, if guys take a business-minded approach to it, there's no point in doing what people did yesterday. You've got to change the approach a little bit on the tillage side of things. Anyway, grain at 130 euros a tonne probably isn't a long-term no. place, and for it, probably at about 150, 155 euros a tonne. Yeah. I think there's loads of opportunity for guys there, yeah. loads. Yeah. Yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the session on farming. I mean, I think the message is loud and clear. I mean, you don't have to own a cow. You don't have to own an acre of land. Um, and, you know, as long as you have a, a vision and an ambition for where you want to go as your career, I mean, you can, go, you can take it, whatever it's dairy, beef, tillage or horticulture, you can take it in that, in that general direction. And, I mean, I think all three are good exponents of their particular sectors. And please show your appreciation with a round of applause for the three of them. Thanks very much. Next session.